So first off, let's back up and talk about those other cancers and why they happen. And then we can talk about okay. mammary cancer and why it happens. So those other cancers and the orthopedic conditions yes. that we see that are higher in neutered or spayed dogs than intact. So that includes osteosarcoma, lymphosarcoma, mast cell tumors, and hemangiosarcoma. Those four cancers have all been shown to be higher in dogs that already have a predilection for them. So like for Rottweilers, that would include the osteosarcoma mm -hmm. and the other three definitely in, in uh, Goldens. Um, those are higher. And why is that? Well, the, the prevailing evidence right now suggests that the reason why those are higher in neutered or spayed animals is because they have higher levels of a hormone called LH, luteinizing hormone. Why do they have higher levels? So I talked about this earlier, but uh, what happens is that in a totally normal intact animal, male or female, their brain releases a hormone called GnRH. It comes from the hypothalamus in the brain. It goes to the pituitary. That GnRH causes the pituitary to release two other hormones, LH and FSH. Those hormones go in the blood to the gonads and cause the gonads to function. If it's in a male, testosterone production, sperm production. If it's in the female, then follicular growth and ovulation. And when those happen, those um, hormones from the gonads, whether it's progesterone and estrogen from the follicles in the female or it's testosterone from the testicles in the male, those hormones do a lot of things. And one of them is that they go back to the pituitary and back to the hypothalamus both and have what's called a negative feedback loop on them and cause both of them to stop producing their hormones. So when you remove the gonads by neutering a male or by spaying a female and taking their ovaries out, you remove that negative feedback of the estrogen or the testosterone on the pituitary. So without that negative feedback, it will continually secrete LH. In an intact animal, that LH is just secreted every in, in a bitch every six months mm -hmm. when it cycles. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it would normally just have a rise in LH for a short period of time, like a 24-hour period, every six months or eight months, however often the bitch cycles. And that's it. That's all the LH it sees. But you remove the ovaries, then it's continual. Now, in a male dog, there's more than there's more LH than that, but it's still episodic. It's not continual LH. It's it's just it's more blips as time goes. Um, and that may be, I don't know, but that may be why the males are not at, at, at as much of a higher risk of cancer as the females are. In That's what I was wondering. Okay. Because the males are already, their physiology is already set up to have more of an exposure to LH than mm -hmm. the females do. Mm -hmm. Bitches have once every six to eight months, 24 hours of exposure to LH mm -hmm. if they're intact. But now you remove the ovaries and it's LH all the time, oh. day and night, 365 days a year. It's high LH because they never get that negative feedback mm. of the estrogen and progesterone to shut it down. Mm. So it stays high. And LH, um, most hormones in the body have multiple jobs. They don't just do one thing. You have to name them for one thing, but they do lots of things. Like prolactin is helps lactation, but it also supports luteal function in the in the ovaries and it does other things so the growth hormone does a lot of things besides just growth so the the point i'm making is that lh is named luteinizing hormone because it helps luteinize which means changing the cells in the ovaries mm -hmm. to producing progesterone that's what a luteinization mm -hmm. does uh, but it does a ton of other things and there are receptors for lh on lots of different tissues in the body and they're not primed to be primed all the, all the time. time. Okay. But when there's always LH, they're mm. always being stimulated. Mm. And cancer, as we know, is unregulated growth. And usually a lot of things have to happen to make the mutations and different things. But this is one more really important step where now they're getting a growth stimulus mm. all the time that they usually wouldn't have. Mm. And so that's why we see cancers in the heart in the spleen, in the blood vessels, in the lymph nodes, in the bones, hmm. in these animals, because they're reacting to unceasingly high LH. That makes so much sense. So um, because of that, there, there's these higher risks of cancer. And mm -hmm. when you've already got a breed that's already at higher risk right. for these cancers, that probably means that that breed 
has in its genome already some mutations that have pushed it in the direction mm-hmm. of those cancers that other breeds don't have. Mm-hmm. So now you add one more factor that just makes it that much more likely and the chance of them getting that cancer goes mm-hmm. way up. 